Hey, it's Beth Gukemer, and I just wanted to share with you a little bit of some of the insight that God's been giving me this last week. This weekend, I have one of my sons who'll be graduating from high school, and I've been talking to him about all that his life has been up until this point, the way we do with high school graduates, and all that we anticipate is still coming for him. And I told him that life is really a series of yeses, that who we say yes to and what we say yes to all adds together to create a life that we hope one day reflects the glory of the God that once saved us. And I was telling him this funny story before he was even born when I was pregnant with our first child. I was with a mission team in Monterey, Mexico where Todd and I were living and I was preparing a bunch of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for them to take with them on a trip um, to a children's home that day. And the kids are kind of shouting at me the, all their requests like I don't eat wheat bread and I don't eat white bread and I don't like crunchy peanut butter and I don't do strawberry jelly. And I was finding myself kind of overwhelmed by all their particular requests and I made this like mental note to myself my children will one day eat any peanut butter and jelly that anybody ever wants to serve them and because that was a conviction I just decided that day was important to me and I knew what I wanted the end result to be I reverse engineered it and so for their lifetime I've bought wheat bread one week and white bread the next week and crunchy peanut butter one day and all natural the next the next week and strawberry jelly with fruit in it one week and smooth grape jelly the next week and gave them exposure to all those different varieties so that I could know for sure that one day, no matter what peanut butter and jelly sandwich anybody ever offered them, they would be grateful for it. And I told him, we get to make this choice in life. That's a silly little example. And it's actually even metaphorical for like, what do we want to know at the end of our life? It's counted for. And how do we reverse engineer the choices we make in that process so that we can be confident that we've spent our energy and our time and our giftings and our life on things that are of eternal in nature. Last year in 2018, I told just about everybody I could get my hands on that there was a word that had captivated my attention. It was a little Hebrew word, Heneni, and it's in our Bibles eight times and it's translated in English as here I am. And we find it in Exodus three when the Lord's talking to Moses in front of the burning bush. We find it in Genesis 22 when Abraham's on his way up the mountain with Isaac getting ready to sacrifice him, he thinks. When the Lord calls out to those two men, they respond with that singular word in Hebrew, Haneni, which we translate as here I am, but in Hebrew, the, the meaning is richer. It really more literally means, whatever it is you're about to ask of me, I'm already in agreement of it. And I kept saying to people last year, hey, listen, I want this to be the year of Haneni. I don't wanna count myself out when the Lord calls my name. I don't want to, I don't want to anticipate the sacrifice and be afraid in advance. I don't want to assume that I can't or won't do that which God is asking me. I want to say yes before I even know what it is that he is requiring. And I got halfway through the year and I got a chance to travel to Israel and I asked someone about that word and I said, hey, am I, am I saying it right? Am I teaching it right? And the guide said to me, you know, Beth, there's one time in the Bible where the Lord says, Hineni, to you. And I said, there's some time in my Bible where the Lord says to me, whatever it is I'm asking of him, he's already in agreement of it. I'm like, where's that? And he told me to open up my Bible to Isaiah chapter 58. And Isaiah 58 might be a familiar passage to you. I'd never read it in this light before. It says, is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen, the Lord speaking, to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke, to share your food with the hungry and provide the poor wanderer with shelter. When you see someone naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Like if we get busy in the work of God, if you feed, feed people who are hungry, invite people to your table that need a spot, you clothe people that, that are naked, you, you break the chains that are holding people down. If you get engaged in the work of God, then it says your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, Heneni, here I am. Whatever it is you're asking of me, I'm already in agreement of it. And I was telling Josh like, listen, I want you to get good grades and make the right friends and all the kind of advice that parents give kids as they leave the home. But most of all, I want you to say yes to the plans of the Lord. I want you to get busy about his work. And if you do it, I promise you, my personal testimony is you're going to get in over your head. You're going to realize you're not enough for what God's asked of you. You're not, you, you're not old enough or young or smart enough or young enough or strong enough or any enough. And the world's going to tell you, so back down or walk away. But I promise you, 
if you get, if you are in the center of his will and you need him and you cry out for help, his response for you will be Hanani. Whatever it is you're asking of me, Josh, I'm already in agreement of it. And really, as I thought about that, those words I was sharing with him, I was thinking, gosh, he's going to best capture that if I live that. It's one thing to say words to our kids as they leave our houses in the morning for school or leave our houses at the end of 18 years for college or they call on the phone for advice. It's one thing to give words. It's another thing to model with our life. And so this, this Hanani is not just a, a slogan I had for a year. It's, a, it's a, the rhythm of a lifestyle I want to have forever. I want the Lord to know that if he looks at me and he calls on me, that the answer to him will be whatever it is that you're asking. I'm already in agreement of it.